this lens may be the new best 35mm walk-around lens money can buy. In this video we're looking at the reasonably new Voigtlander Ultron 35mm f2 like an M-mount or VM lens. Stay tuned and I'll share with you my test results and then by the end of this video you will know whether or not you may want to buy this lens. In my recent YouTube poll you said that this is your second most desired Voigtlander 35mm lens after the Apo. The 35mm f2 Ultron lens is available in black paint as I have here and it's also available in an anodized silver finish. Both of these lenses are called type 2 lenses and they have this really nice focus tab design which you see on a lot of the Leica lenses making it great for say street photography. And then there is also the type 1 lens design which is the black and silver design which has the anodized kind of focus lever. Uh, see my 28mm f2 video if you want to see that style of lens. This is a rangefinder coupled manual focus lens with a close focus distance of 0.58 meters and rangefinder coupled to 0.7 meters. The aperture controls are on the front of the lens and the aperture scale gives you half stop clicks. This is an all metal and glass manual focus lens and it is very Leica like for those of you that like Leica lenses in terms of the feel it's very smooth. And for you geeks it is a 8 element 5 group optical design with a 39mm front filter and a weight of 170 grams or 6 ounces. As with many of the new Voigtlander lenses, this lens is not supplied with a hood, but there are two lens hoods available. You can get the Voigtlander LH12 rectangular style hood, which is the same hood I used in my 28mm f2 video. And then the second hood option is a vented round hood, the LH4N. So for my lens testing in Tenerife, I had the Leica SL with me. So 95% of the photos in this video were shot with the Leica SL. This is an L-mount camera, so I use a Leica L to M adapter. So my first test was the close focus ability and subject background separation. As you can see in these flowers, if you focus at 0.58 meters, you can really blow out the background. Now an F2 35mm lens is not really a bokeh machine, but I did try to get some bokeh. So I asked the model to stand still and shot the lens at 0.58 meters or close to that. And you can see the bokeh from the streetlights in the background. Now in terms of flare, even with no lens hood, this lens is pretty flare resistant. But if you point the lens directly at the sun, you can get some veiling flare where you get loss of detail and loss of contrast around the point of light. Here is me shooting at the sun in Tenerife and actually really like the kind of almost filmic look you get from a slight lack of contrast when shooting towards the sun. In terms of colours, I think the colours are true to life and definitely had no complaints. I tried to find a few colourful subjects to shoot while in Tenerife. Now in terms of distortion, this photo, if you look at the horizon line, it tilts off very, very slightly towards the very edge of the frame. So this lens is not as well corrected as the C35 F2 Apo, but the distortion would be very easy to correct in Photoshop. I also tried to test sun stars out in Tenerife, and here is me doing a control test. You can get sun stars from around F2.5 all the way through then to F16. So if you love sun stars, this lens is amazing for sun stars. The sun stars seem to come with the Ultron design. You also see it on some of the other Ultron lenses, such as my 35 1.7 and the 28mm f2. In terms of lens sharpness, this lens is nice and sharp. Hopefully you can appreciate that in these black and white images. And you can see the, the micro contrast on the, the backlit leaves in this photo. Uh, so I had no complaints at all. I then did a sharpness test back in the studio with a camera on a tripod. Here is the lens shot at f2, f2.8 and f4, focusing on the writing on the top plate of the camera. The lens is more than sharp enough for me at f2, and it does get slightly sharp as you stop down. I was interested to test the lens against my 35 1.7 Ultron, so here's me shooting the f2 at f2, and then the 1.7 at f2, and the 1.7 at f2.8. And I would say the f2 is at least one stop sharper than the 35 1.7, which in the past I thought was a very sharp lens. I also had my Panasonic Lumix S5 camera with me in Tenerife. Here's a model trying out the camera, and you can see the really compact size even on the Lumix. I also then had the like M2 with me in Tenerife, and I shot about two thirds of a roll, but I haven't yet developed the film, so, so I'll share those at a later date on social media. Now in terms of price, if you're based in the UK, you can buy these lenses from Robert White, and the price is £524 and then you can get 5% off with my discount code. If you're outside of the UK you can buy these from Amazon and at the time of making this video it is $799. Okay so what is the verdict? Can I recommend this lens? This lens may be the new best 35mm walk around lens money can buy. This lens is tiny and I love the fact that it's much more compact than my Voigtlander Ultron 35 1.7 which is the other Ultron lens that I have. If we first compare Ultron versus Ultron, if you're on the fence between the 1.7 35mm Ultron or the new F2 35mm Ultron, 
because the optical quality is great on both lenses I'd probably go for the the f2 because a walk around lens for me needs to be compact and this does exactly what it says on the tin and for that reason i'll be more likely to carry this lens with me if i had a compact lens but talking of small lenses i think all of you guys who wrote to me in the past saying you bought the color scope r35 2.5 lens you may want to maybe try and save a few pennies and buy the 35 f2 obviously it goes without saying the ultron is a faster lens the size is very similar it's a sharper lens and for those wanting to upgrade if that's what you want to call it i would definitely recommend the ultron over the scoper for myself it replaces two lenses it replaces the old 35 1.7 and it replaces the 35 2.5 scoper in one lens giving you a pretty much do everything 35 mm lens the only other 35 mm lens you may want to have in addition to this is probably something like the 35 1.2 because that lens is beautiful for portraits and it gives you really nice bokeh and if you prefer something smaller don't forget the Voigtlander Nocturne 35 1.4 lens so who is this lens best suited for? Now as much as I love this lens, should you buy this lens? It depends what you want. Is it the sharpest lens? No. Is it the smallest lens? No. Is it the fastest lens? No. Is it the cheapest lens? No. Is it the best of all worlds? I think yes. So let me break that down. If you want the sharpest Voigtlander lens, get the 35 f2 Apo. If you want the smallest or cheapest Voigtlander 35mm lens, get the Coloscope R f2.5. If you want the fastest lens with the best bokeh and kind of shallow depth of field, get the 35mm f1.2. If you shoot film and want a fast lens, which is range from a cupboard and has a hard stop at 0.7 meters, get the Nocturne 35 1.4 because that only goes to 0.7 meters, so you can't mess up your f close focusing on, say, a film camera. And the same with the scope bar, that's also a benefit of the scope bar. If you're using an EVF camera like me, you can definitely benefit from any of these lenses that have a close focus distance of less than 0.7 meters, because it really helps if you get that little bit closer for the subject background separation. I think for me personally, I would definitely use this lens on film. I'd just be very careful at the the close focus distance end of the scale so not to mess up the close focus if your shoot stop down i'd say probably stick with a scope bar because that's a smaller lens if you're always working low light i'd probably recommend either the 1.2 if you don't mind a heavy big lens or the 1.4 if you want something smaller and cheaper if you're on the market for a 35mm f2 lens, you could also look at the Lucky Summicron 35mm, the non-apo lens. I did a workshop recently and the guy had this lens on his M6, so I shot the two lenses side by side to see how they compared. From my test, with both lenses at f2, the Ultron is sharper at f2 at close focus distance than the Summicron. And from my testing, that was also the same at infinity or close to infinity. This is the Summicron shooting the Ultron and this is the Ultron shooting the Summicron. If you have the money, the best performing 35mm lens is quite possibly the Leica 35 Apo. And then if you're more of a Zeiss guy, you could also get the Zeiss Z5 F2 Biogon. A massive thank you to Flaghead Photographic who kindly sent this lens to review. And as always, a huge thanks to my amazing patrons. And a special thank you to Carl who kindly sent me $15 via PayPal. Thanks, Carl.